Absa Group's earnings per share fell by 5% due to ongoing financial pressures on households. The group's six-month earnings decreased to 10.18 billion rand, with diluted earnings per share dropping to 1,227.7 cents from 1,281 cents last year. Furthermore, the bank maintained its interim dividend at 685 cents per share and forecast mid-single-digit revenue growth for 2024. Absos Group Financial Director Dion Raju provides insights on the recent performance. We delivered 10.2 billion of earnings for the half, which is slightly down year on year. The main driver of this was because cost growth of 8% was higher than income growth of 3%. The cost growth was due to investments made during 2023, especially in frontline staff to better serve our customers, our brand and technology. And the full effects came through this year. This investment was important in 2023 to ensure that we can deliver long-term sustainable growth. In the first half of the year, business conditions in South Africa were tough. The property market remained subdued. <clears throat> New vehicle sales were down 8%. Savings levels have also been depleted through the cycle. <clears throat> We've seen more and more affluent customers seeking debt, while overall customer affordability reduced. Despite that, our SA retail portfolios showed a strong recovery on the back of improving delinquency profiles. Customer numbers have grown uh, to 12.4 million and digitally active customers are up 12% to 4.1 million. Our CIB business grew constant currency revenues at 11%. Their credit losses normalized off a low base as they had to deal with some single name impairments particularly in consumer-facing sectors. Our Arrow RBB revenues also grew 11% in constant currency. Weaker currencies in the region does mean the translation into RAND is less for us. Fiscal challenges and debt sustainability concerns and their impact on FX and inflation remain. However, GDP growth in the region remains strong in the first half. We do expect better full-year prospects for the company. Last week, we published our latest macroeconomic forecasts that showed improved GDP outlooks and earlier and deeper rate cuts. Our GDP growth forecast is now 2% for 2025, while the prime rate is expected to be 1% lower by the first half of next year, providing much needed relief to consumers. This is on the back of the election outcome, as we observe strong flows into the market on the back of renewed confidence. As a business, we are especially encouraged by the Government of National Unity's commitment to Operation Vulendela and the potential for investment in and stability of our infrastructure, which is a core underpin of confidence and ultimately growth. We therefore expect better earnings in the second half and an improved return on equity.